there we were on a calm part of the Amazon River. Or maybe I should say in the Amazon River. I look over at my friend. Hey, Gwen, isn't this great? We're bathing like the Incas. Gwen looks at me, her eyes a little bit wide, a tinge of fear. She says, I just dropped my soap. Hey, did you poke me? I look over at Gwen. No? Hey, did you poke me? She shakes her head frantically and suddenly I'm looking at the murky water with a little bit of concern. Aren't there piranha in the Amazon River? That day, two Canadian girls set a world record for the fastest time of getting into a canoe unassisted. <laughs> Contest chair, judges, fellow Toastmasters and guests, welcome. Today I'm going to take you on an adventure and we are going to find something valuable and a true treasure, very rare, true love. Now some of you have heard that it does not exist, but I aim to dispel those myths and to give you tangible proof that it does. The setting, Peru, Central or South America. The date, 2003. The era, BK, before kids. <laughs> My husband and I were on a humanitarian aid mission trip, which I would call an adventure, and he would call a working holiday. For you see, my husband is a family doctor, and he was still working 12 to 14 hours, but this time in hot Peru, instead of an air-conditioned and fully equipped clinic. If you've never been on a mission trip before, I want to share with you a few differences that make this an adventure versus a holiday. The first is our accommodations hotel for us. Imagine with me instead coming into a village and seeing a large community hall with vaulted ceilings all made out of palm branches and inside tent city. Yes, we are going to be staying in hot stuffy tents. We were told it was for our own protection and so that night I learned what they meant by that. In my ultra-sensitive, traveling away from home mode, I could hear the slightest noises. And I heard rustlings, and I heard flappings, and I heard this strange pinging sound. And the next morning, I learned what it was. Bats lived in the rafters and were flying about. You probably guessed it. We were safe in our tents from all the bat droppings that were going on. Well, let me tell you, we donated those tents to the organization. They did not make the return trip home. <sighs> True love showed itself the first time that night. For they did indeed give us thin mattresses that were sweltering. It was so hot. But True love gave his wife the only cot that was two feet off the ground and allowed for airflow and a good night's rest. Another difference between adventure and holiday would be the food. For you see, we had the option of eating whatever the locals caught in the Amazon River or whatever our team remembered to bring in a can. My man has one simple rule when it comes to eating meat, and that is it must have legs. At least two, but no more than four. That means that the menu options that we have from the Amazon River are somewhat limited. And so true love smiled every night as we ate canned peaches every single night. <laughs> now just in case you're thinking that it was all work and no play, while we were in Peru, we did make time to visit Machu Picchu, which is an ancient village with a sun palace high in the cloud rainforest. When we arrived, it was spectacular. It did not disappoint. The houses 
houses are built right into the mountainside, and we were able to wander about the ancient city. Now we learned that the best view of Machu Picchu is actually from the neighboring mountain on top of it called Wadu Picchu. Always up for an adventure, I suggested that we climb up Wanu Picchu to get that picture. And so we started off on the trail. Trail is an apt term. In Canada, we would have six foot wide, well maintained paths with a guardrail. Not so in Peru. <laughs> that narrow trail was very dangerously close to the steep cliff and true love walked behind me, <laughs> ready to leap if I should stumble. When we finally reached the top, we were in front of this massive boulder with a knotted rope hanging down. And we, we weren't sure if, or where, or how it was anchored on the other side. So true love led the way. I actually made it, he called down. And so we were able to enjoy the, the spectacular, vivid landscape of the, the town that was shrouded in clouds and get those pictures. Then it was time to head back for the bus. And we had two choices. We could either go the same way that we came up the hill, boring, or we could go <laughs> down the back side and hit the less frequent moon palace. Always up for adventure, we decided to hit the Moon Palace, and down, down, down we went the mountain. A lot of time later, we finally hit the Moon Palace, and it was less spectacular. It was so disappointing. It was really just an old building of stones. I took that obligatory picture, and <laughs> up the mountain we went again to get back to the path. Halfway there, my legs gave way and my will to go on was waning. I turned to my husband, because I didn't want him to miss the bus, and I said, leave me, go on without me. <laughs> True love turned around, held out his hand and said, I'm not leaving you, and he pulled me up the rest of that mountain. We made the bus together. I leave you with this piece of advice. Hold on to adventure loosely. Be okay when things are thrilling. Be ready for the disappointments of the moon palaces in your life, which promise more than they give. And if you find true love, hold on tight, because it's going to be the adventure of a lifetime. <laughs>